Hi, and welcome back to Pathways to Wealth. In this episode, we're talking to Kyle Holzhauer, who I'm really proud of. He's a guy that's part of our trading community that turned $480 into well over $50,000 trading Bitcoin. And Kyle has a really cool story. You know, he went to college and like a lot of people that go the traditional university route, ended up with a lot of debt and he worked really really hard to learn the right way to trade bitcoin after kind of trading on his own and, and losing a little bit he l really invested the time to learn as much as he could and applied a lot of the principles that i taught him and he was able to grow his account from you know again less than a thousand bucks to over 50 grand so i'm really proud of him he has a lot to say that i think both new and experienced traders can learn from and uh without further ado let's go ahead and jump right into it all right, here we go. So we are live, and um, I'm here today with uh, Kyle Holzhauer. Kyle, thanks for being here, man. You, you've got a really inspiring story, and one that I just, I think, you know, as I was just telling you, I, I think it's so important for people to see how viable it is to make money in Bitcoin, even if you're not, you know, somebody who has tens of thousands of dollars or decades experience trading in the traditional financial markets, and like how you know, the cryptocurrency economy is really giving the power back to like us quote unquote little guys. But again, thanks for being yeah. here, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This, this is uh like, this is a brand new experience for me doing a cryptocurrency interview. So happy to be here. Happy to be talking to you. Nice, man. So let, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So I, I want to just start by kind of talking a little bit about your background, but before we do that, what have you actually accomplished trading Bitcoin. I, I know you passed a big milestone, something that I know a lot of people are dealing with, which is student loans. But, you know, what have you been able to do with, with Bitcoin trading? Uh, Chris, it's it's been an, an, an amazing uh, past couple of years. Uh, so ultimately, I set up my goal to just, you know, become profitable, just to learn, just to make a few extra bucks on the side. But I never thought that I would ever be able to make enough money to get to the point where I can say, holy, holy crap, I have enough money to actually pay off my student loans, <laughs> nice. you know? So, you know, it's, it, it's, it's been an interesting experience and I, I've, I've learned of a lot, even, even life lessons, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've been able to, uh, generate enough money to, to pay off my loans and, uh, it's it's been a wild ride so far that's awesome yeah, so yeah. so did you start with uh, i know you were kind of messaging me it was like 480 dollars or something like that yeah so maybe i should just get into the whole story yeah yeah let's just start okay. from the beginning yeah. yeah so even even before that chris i i had a couple opportunities to get into bitcoin that i that i passed up and i kind of regret this but you know, I, I look I look back on it now as as a learning experience. But uh, we all have those, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is dating back all the way until 2010. Okay, wow. yeah. yeah. Okay, so you know, I, I'm like a tech geek. I have I have a high end computer. I I got multiple graphics cards in my computers, and you know, I've always had this even even back in 2010 before I really had a, a real career, a real job. Um, so I heard about Bitcoin and I was like, okay, what, it, what is this? This make-believe currency. What, what, what the heck is this? Magic internet money. It's magic internet money. And I was yeah. like, well, I wasn't even thinking it was money. I thought it was just coins, like make-believe coins. I thought it was like a, like a currency, like in a game or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and at the time, I was actually doing some like distributed computing uh already so it wasn't bitcoin mining and i was actually doing what is called folding at home mm -hmm. and uh this is uh folding at home is pretty much um you know unwinding proteins uh because like these proteins are like elementary machines inside every cell that we rely on to keep us alive and healthy mm -hmm. uh, and they they assemble themselves by folding and when proteins misfold they can cause serious health consequences so I, I, I was running this program on my my GPU at the time and it was doing like these these folding calculations and I was like on a on a team, you know, it, it was just some random thing that I was doing. So this and, was just a hobby for you. Yeah. And then and then 
I hear about Bitcoin mining. And I'm like, huh, this is kind of like the same thing. And I'm like, maybe I should get into Bitcoin mining. So after I got into it, um, sorry about that. Girlfriend just walked into the room. Um, so I, I had I, I was trying to make a decision. Should I should I try out this Bitcoin mining or should I try folding at home? And I ended up just full I ended up just doing the folding at home. So I that was my first opportunity missed, and that was back in 2010. Um going into my second opportunity missed. Um well hang on, Kyle, yeah. one second, I'll cut you off. So basically you looked at Bitcoin and you had an opportunity to mine it, but you said no, not for me. Yeah, I said no, not for me, not right now. This is not really something I'm interested in. I'll, I'd rather do something else with my computer. So, power. so what was it about Bitcoin? Was it that you didn't understand that it was actual real money, or did you not believe that it had value and maybe it was just like some kind of passing fad or something? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think yeah, it was. I thought it was just some passing fad at the time, mm -hmm. and you know, obviously, I didn't, I didn't know the power behind it, mm -hmm. and. You know, I think that's that's what we're dealing with now. A lot of people don't understand what Bitcoin is, so they're just like looking the other way. They're not really absolutely, and and that's def, that's a common story, isn't it? Like yeah. for, even for me, like I first heard about Bitcoin in 2011, and it took me two years of stubbornness to really like believe that it was something viable. So that's I'm glad that you said that because like a lot of people think that you know that you know the quote unquote early adopters just got lucky, but there were a lot of people. They were looking at Bitcoin. It was like, okay, it's kind of cool, but not right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, it it occurred to me, uh, you know, a second time, and I was like, I, I had a second chance to look at it. Um, so this is this is kind of interesting too. So my uh, my one of my my friends, uh, his brother actually created a Bitcoin exchange. Okay, mm. he created a Bitcoin exchange, right? So I had all the opportunity to kind of like get into it. Um, but ultimately his brother ended up selling the exchange for an undisclosed amount. And I can't really name the exchange. Um, mm -hmm. and my friend, he had offered me a hundred Bitcoin for $14. <laughs> oh man. It's not as bad as the, the, what was it? The pizza for 10,000. Yeah. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not, not that bad, but still like a hundred Bitcoin for 14 bucks. Wow. And I agreed to it. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll set up a wallet. I didn't know what the heck I was saying or doing. And I never set the wallet up. Oh, man. What <laughs> year never, was that? This was 2011 going okay. into 12. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, another missed opportunity. Okay. So that was, that was strike two. <laughs> but then uh, 2013 comes rolling around. Like that's, that's when the Bitcoin bubble, quote unquote bubble began. Yep. And, uh, you know, the, the mainstream media, as you say, uh, started kicking in and I saw Bitcoin was at 700 bucks. I was like, what? No way. How did that happen? What? Yeah. I was like, it was trading at like, you know, five, 10 cents. Like, how did it get to 700? I was like, oh, this must be some like scam article or something. <laughs> <laughs> something that was inaccurate. Yeah. And then, and then I found some charts on, online. I'm like, holy crap. This is trading at seven hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, so amazing. So, is that when you started trading it, or what? What actually got you into the trading side of it? That that was the catalyst, right? So, I I Google Bitcoin. I just Bitcoin and Google, and then I found Coinbase.com. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and to make a a longer story short, I ended up buying my first uh, fractional Bitcoin. Uh, I bought 0 0.1 Bitcoin on November 27th for 72 bucks. Mm. And I, <laughs> this is my first trade, by the way. Uh, and I sold it for de on December 1st for $104. So that's, that's kind of like what got me like hooked onto it. I'm like, wait a second, I can actually make some real money. Like I only put 0 0.1 Bitcoin into this. Mm -hmm. What if I started trading with more Bitcoin? And what if I learned the fundamental analysis behind it. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah, that's when I first bought my Bitcoin and, uh, it was, it was exciting. I was like, I started mining Bitcoin on my laptop. I was showing friends in school. I was like, look at this guys. Look, look at what my computer's doing. It's overheating and it's mining Bitcoin. They're like, what the heck are you talking about, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually make money mining it? Because I know a lot of people got into the mining side. I never did. And like some people made a ton of money and others just kind of, you know, completely flopped for them. 
Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, at the at this point, I was mining on my laptop. Yeah, it was a it's a gaming laptop, but it wasn't anything substantial. I believe yeah. Asics Asics were out at that point, so I wasn't really uh, getting any real hash power. So I was making next to nothing. But it was mm-hmm. still cool seeing you know my computer work and solve this Bitcoin algorithm to you know and reward me in some sort of currency. Mm-hmm. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, especially because it had a value at this point. Yeah, you're like some- my my computer is actually running something that's generating actual money. You know, you're you're part of the system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah. when did you start watching my videos, or how did how did we come to to meet? Yeah, so um, this is this is so I was off on my own pretty much. Uh, so after I sold on December first, um, you know, I, I was I was dumb money, as you say. I was I was that uh, that dumb not back in at a thousand, <laughs> and I sold at six fifty. Mm. So you bought the high, and then when it dumped, you you panicked at the low, basically. Right. So I was that I was that ninety percent. Yep. Yep. You know? And don't feel bad. I mean, that was a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I was only trading with a little bit, so I didn't I didn't lose much. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. But. Yeah, that was like my first like, you know, it, it kind of hit me in the head. It was like, wait, I really got to start like learning how to do this if I'm actually going to uh, move forward with this because I don't want to just keep getting wrecked. Uh, so, yep. yeah, that's that's that, Chris. That's when I started looking on YouTube. I was like, OK, how do you trade? How, how to trade Bitcoin? And I mm-hmm. and I saw a few videos and, you know, they weren't they weren't that great. And then I, I managed to pop up on one of your videos and uh, it was, I believe it was you explaining how, uh, how there was a big retracement after, after such a big bubble. And mm-hmm. I, was, I was like, oh crap, I wish I had watched this guy before because I probably wouldn't have sold, you know, or I probably wouldn't have bought back in at a thousand in the first place, but I definitely wouldn't have sold at such a low level because about an hour or two hours later went all the way back up to like 800 bucks. And I was just like, yeah. what the heck am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I need, I need help. I need to, I need to find someone who knows what they're doing and kind of right on their back for a while. So I, uh, I got hooked onto your videos, your uh, free videos on YouTube, which were, which are awesome. Nice. Uh, Thanks, yeah. Man. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the reason why I put those videos at that time in particular is I knew a lot of people were buying at the high, you know, and and I heard from people that were like putting their investment accounts and I'm like, I got to put something out because this is about to get real crazy. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad that could help you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's, it's still helping me. I follow you on Twitter. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing your, uh, your, your free alerts and it's, it's great. It's great what you're doing for the whole community. And, uh, You've you've probably made uh, quite a bit of money for people, including myself. You you've helped out a lot, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Pretty much, like I I got some really good takeaways from your videos. Um, definitely, uh, you know, one of the first things was like uh, pulling pulling away pulling the information away from the mainstream media. You know, China, China's banning Bitcoin. Mt. Gox is hacked. Bitcoin is broken. Oh no. Um, you know, I began looking out for those type of, uh, news articles, mm-hmm. right. And, you know, I, I, I started understanding the mass human psychology of the markets. And I think, I think I've, I've caught on to it pretty well. Obviously I'm not perfect and I'm, I'm still a beginner in every sense, mm-hmm. but you have definitely set the foundation for me. And uh, it's it's awesome to have that uh, that that tool to uh, kind of uh, trade with at this point. So thank you. That's great. Yeah, I mean, that, I I feel like that's the most important thing, right? Is like, and and I've talked about this in the courses and in the trading room and stuff. Is like, you know, you you have to understand the human psychology aspect of this first, right? Like, you have to understand where people panic, where people get over exuberant bullishness and and start chasing the highs and having FOMO, right? Like fear of missing out. And once you begin to understand those things and how they relate to the chart, all of a sudden technical analysis starts to make sense. But yes. you know, if you just put yes. a whole bunch of indicators on the chart and you're just trying to chase the market around, you know, you're going to get blown up. And that's why I like, 
you know, I just am a big fan of talking about possibilities and probabilities and then fully planning a trade and, and using, you know, really smart risk management because if not, you know, you will get chopped out. Right. Yeah. And that was another thing that I was, I was doing in the beginning too. I was, I was trading with my entire por portfolio. I mean, it wasn't a lot, but I was trading with the whole thing and, uh, you know, that's, that's obviously pretty risky and uh, I probably shouldn't have been doing that from the beginning, but you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. Sure. Yeah. So, so how have the past few years gone for you? So after the crash and you started, you know, learning and, and developing your trading skills, like what happened and, and what have you achieved since then? Yeah. So um, I would say, okay, so this is the way I analyze my performance. Uh, I lost more frequently in the beginning, but my, my losses were very minimal. Mm -hmm. So I, I stopped myself before I lost too much. And, uh, that was uh, partially due to like the technical analysis that I've also learned from your videos. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, the, the, when I won, I won, I won bigger percentages than I lost. So ultimately I was profitable. Nice. And yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I ended up making uh, off of my first first investment. I ended up making twenty seven hundred dollars, and then I put that all to my student loans. Actually, um, that twenty seven hundred dollars, and that was like a huge deal for me. That was, was like, oh my god, twenty seven hundred dollars. That's that's amazing. I how did I do that? <laughs> nice. And and you had a pretty significant student loan debt, right? Oh, yeah, we're we're talking over sixty thousand dollars, Chris. Wow. Yeah. And, and I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos talking about college. I mean, that's a very, very typical story. And, you know, it, it's just great to hear that you were able to pay that down so quickly because a lot of people get stuck with massive debt for a long time. I know, I know. And that was, that was my biggest fear in school. Um, you know, I, I, I went to school for engineering and I, I thought that my, uh, my job outlook was pretty good. And that, I guess that was kind of like a, a good, uh, comfort that I had, but there's, 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 there's some fear, you know, in every student that, you know, what if, what if I lose my job? What if I'm stuck with this debt? Like, what do I do? Like, right. that was just spiraling through my head. So, um, that was definitely my main driver, uh, for doing this and getting into the, the Bitcoin crypto world. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You, you gotta have a why, right? You gotta have a motivating factor to say like, why am I going to put all this time in? What am I going for? Am I just trying to get rich or do I have a, like a smart, tangible goal, right? Which you did. Yeah. And, and by no means I, I, I don't have a goal to become rich. Uh, that's, that's not my desire. I just, I just want to, I just want to be good at what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. I definitely, I definitely want to continue, uh, doing this because obviously this is, uh, prove to bring wealth and uh, happiness into my life. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I think you, you said something really important there, which is like, you, you just want to, you know, keep getting better, right? Like if you focus on the process of like skill development, the result will come. But the, the mistake that I see a lot of people make is they're so obsessed with the money, right? Like they're obsessed with the fear of not losing money and they're obsessed with the greed of like making money that they forget about the process and about just being good at it, right? And if you yeah. focus on the process, the result will come, but the other way will just be really frustrating. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so pretty much I, I, I had sold out, um, I had made that uh, $2,700 and then I, I let Bitcoin consolidate for a while, kind of bottom out. And what year was that that you did the 2,700? Um, I would say, uh, beginning of 2015. Okay, cool. So after the 2014 bear market, then it kind of bottomed out and then you started trading and started building your account a little more there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then uh, I pretty much got back in once I saw uh, Bitcoin had been crashing again, and I saw one of your alerts on Twitter, you know, saying like, "Hey guys, you know, um, take a look at this. Uh, you know, we're, we're we just traded at 160 on Bitfinex, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, potentially a good time to get in." Um, and I made the t decision on my own, obviously, to get in. And uh, I bought in with four hundred and eighty dollars at that point. And uh, I've I've turned that into well over fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Scott, that is really impressive. Man. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I think it's just a really cool accomplishment. I think, uh, yeah. and I'm glad you brought me on because I, I think this, this will inspire a lot of people to really buckle down and kind of learn the process. Yeah, it, it's, it really is good, man. I mean, it's, it's inspiring and, you know, I can tell you're, you're just a really humble guy that has put in the hard work and it's paid off. You know, it, it's, it's good to see that you know, in Bitcoin, you don't have to start with tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars and have decades of experience. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just an easier market to trade than the stock market, in my opinion. And it's it's just really nice because there's not as much red tape or barriers to entry and to turn four hundred and eighty dollars into fifty grand and like quickly wipe out debt that you thought was you were going to have for a long time. That is just an incredible story, man. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it, it still blows my mind every single day, Chris, that I wake up and I'm like, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, 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 I just getting rolling. Yeah. And obviously, a lot of the credit goes to you and uh, your your free videos that you put out on YouTube. And I know you have a whole whole program dedicated to uh, bettering traders, uh, the skill incubator. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, I think that's something really, really good to get into because I think everyone can accelerate through that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Appreciate I really, it. Yeah, I mean, really it's love all what about you're doing. skill development, right? It's it's one thing to like learn theory, but that's why we're in the markets together every day and um, just really trying to, to focus on, you know, taking it to the next level. So yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to, to move forward with this and, you know, I, I love, uh, you know, talking with the Twitter community. I know a lot of the, uh, the uh, Twitter community, most, most of the uh, charting analysis is incorrect or whatever, but uh, I think uh, that's what kind of got me into it as well. A lot of uh, cool people out there also trading. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a little community. So I think yeah. my followers as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun. You know, there's, there's people literally from all over the world you know i've been in the stock market for a long time and it's mostly people you know in the states but i mean man we've got people in the group from all of the corners around the world and it's just so cool to see how it doesn't matter if you're in rural burma or yeah. if you're in new york city <laughs> like you can participate in this market and yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's been really cool yeah yeah absolutely absolutely it's it's really exciting right now. Exciting times. I, I cannot wait to see what the future has in store for uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and uh, God knows what else is gonna come out. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it, it was it's been a funny progression. Like just even two or three years ago, pretty much everybody on Wall Street was laughing at Bitcoin, right? Yeah. And, and now here we are just a few short years later and over a billion dollars in venture capital has been raised for Bitcoin startups. You now have every single hedge fund and money manager, you know, talking about blockchain. Like nobody really wants to say Bitcoin is all about <laughs> right. blockchain, right? But right. like it's all blockchain. <laughs> yeah. 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 That Bitcoin thing was cool too, but it, you know, blockchain is <laughs> where it's really at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all you hear these days. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool. I mean, it's it's being fully adopted, and and I can't wait to see. Like, I think the next five years are going to be really interesting. We're going to see massive disruption in everything from you know we're already seeing it in the financial markets, but you know the real estate market, like how closings and title uh, searches are done, to you know healthcare, like every every major yeah. market is going to be impacted by this. Yeah, Fa Factum's doing a great job with that right now, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's, and, and a lot of people like that I talk to that criticize fact and they're like, well, they're not making moves fast enough. I'm like, guys, they're working <laughs> with countries like China and Honduras. Like, you know, right. they're making, they're going to, it's going to take several years, but when they do hit, it's going to make big, big changes. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, the same thing kind of happens with when I tell my friends and family about crypto, they're kind of like, you know, you know, it's just, it's just a fad. It's going to fade away. It's not going to last, but I, I'm telling them like, hey, just pay attention. Uh, start learning it now because this could be a good opportunity for you. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I tell everybody that too. Like you don't want to wait and look back five years from now and go, man, I missed the boat. 
you know, right. we're still in the infancy stage. Like there's still a lot of development and I'm not saying, you know, look, just blindly buy and hope that Bitcoin goes to 10,000 a coin, but you know, definitely learn about it at least, you know, at the bare minimum, understand what it is and the implications it's going to have, because this quite literally is the biggest financial revolution that we've seen in yeah, my, absolutely. anybody's lifetime. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a really cool time to be in right now. I'm yeah. glad I jumped on the boat early. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, so Kyle, let me ask you, like, what's the biggest lesson or m maybe one major lesson that just comes to mind that you've learned over the past few years um, about trading or investing specifically in Bitcoin that maybe helped you go from, you know, like maybe breaking even or losing a little bit. Like you said in the beginning, you had a lot of losers, but they were small. So you did the right yeah. thing, which is control yeah. your risk. But what do you think was the biggest shift to where you really started to grow your account quickly and took that, you know, 480 bucks to 50 grand? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, yeah, obviously, with, you know, stopping my losses was was the first thing. But, uh, you know, I think uh, under really going back to the whole uh, understanding the, the mass human psychology and combining that with like the te technical analysis, you know, um, you it, the biggest lesson is you can't always trust technical analysis is what mm -hmm. i'm trying to say um you you kind of you also have to really factor in the mass human psychology and kind of understand you know uh you know based on uh, multiple parameters or factors that you know the market could shift you know mm -hmm. it, it could go the opposite direction even even if technical analysis might suggest it's it's going up or down you have to you have to look at it at, at different angles you can't just look at it from one one angle and say okay that's a i'm i'm buying in i'm gonna sell at this point you really have to you really have to understand uh the, all, all all different angles and how it's shifting in real time because you know the bitcoin is a 24 7 market it's mm -hmm. it's never ending it's not like the stock market where it ends every day it is always going right so yeah. that's that's my biggest biggest lesson is 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 to not just only trust technical analysis or um or or trust uh you know the mass human psychology but combine everything together look at every single parameter and kind of just uh take come up with like an overarching plan based on yeah. everything yeah exactly yeah. exactly but, yeah I, I always like to say like technical analysis works a hundred percent of the time in <laughs> hindsight right like yeah. you could always look back at a chart and say and and throw an indicator on and say, oh, see where the market went up there? It was because of this or see where it went down there it was because of this. But it's much harder when you have that hard right edge, right? Where like the market's moving live and you have to make a decision on the fly. You know, you really have to think, in my opinion, like a chess player, right? Like yeah. you have to look at all of the moves your opponent could make. Think about what the highest probability move is, what the, what move the market's li most likely to make, right. and then plan your trade around that. And if you're wrong, cut it quickly. If you're right, stick with it until something changes, right? Right. And I think that's a big change in mindset from the 99 whatever percentage of people it is that go out there and just look for quote unquote calls or to, to look to mm -hmm. be right in the market. It's like the market doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about your ego or how right you are. It's can you stay flexible? Can you stay disciplined? And ultimately, can you find an edge? Right. And you know what, Chris? Um, another lesson I learned too, which is mm -hmm. really important, is is to not 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 narrow down on like the hourly or minute scale. Don't don't watch tick to tick like <laughs> Yeah. If you get tick tick locked, right? Yep. You get tick locked, tick uh, tick locked. You're 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 gonna make mistakes. You're gonna over trade. Um, so the way I've been doing it lately is, you know, zooming out, looking at the overall trend. You know, if there's a smaller trend within a bigger trend, I'll look at that obviously. But you know, make sure you pay attention to the bigger trend as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Bitcoin can get really kind of choppy intraday. Like if you look at a one minute or a five minute, but yeah. I th and I want to ask you what your favorite time frame is, but I, I typically start with the daily and then, you know, if it calls for it, go down to an hourly and then maybe sometimes a 15 minute. What, what do you typically look at? I I typically look at, look at the hourly if I'm trading within, um, within like a day, like intraday. Um, but I, I found that the best time to trade is when, when China is actually trading. So like mm. around, uh, 2, 2 AM, 3 AM, 4 AM. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah. So like I work the night shift, so I have the opportunity to stay up and, and, and watch, watch these, these trades happen as they go. So uh, nice. That yeah. That's helps. a good point because you know, China is a big percentage of the, the Bitcoin volume. And um, I remember in particular in 2014, thankfully we were in Asia or that time zone for about half of that year. And yeah, a lot of the big moves either happened on a Saturday morning or like, you know, just weird times. So right. that's, I would say is maybe one of the downsides, but it's also keeps you on your toes and keeps you engaged. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, I guess one last thing, one last lesson, mm -hmm. you know, it, it might go against that a little bit, but um, I want to make sure to tell people not to like make this your life, not to get overly attached to your phone and not to overly uh, watch the charts. And, you know, cause at, at one point I was kind of like that and it wasn't, it wasn't making me any additional money. It wasn't doing any good for me. It was just, it was, it was taking over for a little bit, but mm -hmm. then I, t I, I took a few steps back and I'm like, do I really need to do this? And I, and I took a few steps back and, you know, I'm making even better moves now. I'm more clear on my decisions. So. Yeah, that yeah. man, that is some really good advice. Like, you know, trade to live, don't live to trade, exactly. right? Like don't exactly. don't make don't make this, you know, dominate over every area of your life. And it's easy to do like if you love the, you know, if you geek out like us, right? Like yeah. it's easy to really get into stuff and just read and read and really get into it. But when it comes to trading decisions, like I agree, less is more. You know, my motto yeah. is actually trade less, profit more. Like the, the less decisions you make, the, the less, you know, room for error and the less you're going to just go manufacture trades that really aren't there. Right. Right. Yeah. I was definitely over trading at first, but then I, I, I took a step back and I started making way better decisions. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. So what's next? What do you have any other goals or uh, what's, what's for in the future for you? Yeah, so uh, now that I have enough to obviously pay off my loans, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, definitely save up for a home because I'm living in an apartment right now. So every single month, my money is going to some some guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, some 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 guy has my money, and I'm not building up any equity. So mm -hmm. I think I want to get a, a a nice down payment going uh, on a home, and I, I believe that would be my next goal. Nice. From there. Nice. That's a good yeah. goal, man. Yeah. I, I, I'm a fan of taking some profits from trading and putting them in different areas, you know, real estate or gold <laughs> or just something, you know, just mix yeah. it up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so um, what exchanges do you trade on or have you traded on or do you have any favorites? Yeah. So, um, so back in the day uh, before uh, the New York State bit license was activated. I was mm -hmm. trading on a uh, Poloniex and I was also trading on MintPal, which was taken down. But my favorite chain uh, exchanges right now are uh, uh, GDAX, which is the global digital uh, asset exchange. It's, it's mm -hmm. Coinbase's exchange. Yep. I trade Bitcoin with USD pair there. And I also trade uh, alternative currencies uh, on, uh, 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 bitrix.com okay uh, volume's not great but uh i think i think over time the volume will get a little bit bigger there i think they're yeah. making some pretty good moves so uh but yeah those are the two main exchanges but unfortunately i live in new york state so i'm 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 kind of blocked away from uh, poloniex and i don't i don't know if they're going to be allowing a, a new york state residents in the future but uh that's that's kind of the downfall right now <laughs> Yeah, that uh, that was really disappointing when they came out with that legislation. Just because I, you know, whenever you saw, you probably knew too. I mean, nobody was going to want to do business in New York, and it it makes it tough. And um, I just hope that they get it figured out. You know, that's yeah, all. Same I, here. Same here. It's a bummer. Yeah, it's like really like the, the kind of the world's financial capital has to screw it up. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. And there, there's so many missed opportunities. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Poloniex's charts. I'm looking at Ethereum. I'm looking at all these other uh, cryptocurrencies on uh, Poloniex, and I'm like, wow, such a missed opportunity. I could have been in that trade. I could have made, you know, a good investment there and potentially sold for higher. <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah. the good news is, is there's always another trade, right? Yep, there's always another trade. Yep, <laughs> that's right. 
Awesome. So what, um, what altcoins do you like to trade? Um, so, uh, I did mention Ethereum. Ethereum does trade on, uh, Bitrix.com. They're also beginning to trade on, uh, GDAX.com, but it, that, uh, again, it's, it's not available to trade in my area yet. Uh, they kind of just added it, but, uh, I, I love trading Ethereum. I made some really good profit on Ethereum. And again, that was a lot, a lot of that profit was due to some of your alerts on Twitter, um, the ascending triangles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome, and uh, I I bought into the Lisk ICO, and I made uh, three and a half times my investment there, which was awesome. Nice, yeah, that was uh, good. Yeah, yeah, I didn't put too much into it. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily recommend getting into ICOs. That was kind of like my own personal decision to get into. Yeah, it. it's you, definitely risky, isn't it? Very, very risky. It was my own personal decision to get into it. It ha happened to pay off. I don't recommend people just, you know, going ICO hunting without mm -hmm. them doing their due diligence and research. But yeah, I think uh, we've kind of seen that start to implode a little bit, right? Like some of the recent ICOs are just, you know, it's kind of like a, a pop and flop where once they list where once they list on an exchange, everybody tries to sell, right? And then what right. happens? Well, the market collapses. Right. So yeah, like recently waves, I don't know if you heard about waves, waves, oh, yeah. began, waves began trading. A lot of people thought it was going to start trading on uh, Poloniex, uh, but they never listed on Poloniex. They, they listed on uh, Bitrix only. And mm -hmm. a lot of people got scared and they sold and now it's well below ICO price. So a lot of people are, are in the red right now. That's not to say that it won't go up in the future, but yeah, that's, that's an example of uh, an ICO that's not, living up to everyone's expectations. So mm -hmm. it's definitely risky guys. <laughs> did you invest in the Dow? Um, I, I, I did invest in the Dow. I did. Mm -hmm. I only put a little bit into it initially and mm -hmm. I used, I used Bitrix. Uh, they had like an auto invest option. So you can just like convert your Ethereum to Dow right on the exchange. Kind of like how Poloniex did. They did the same thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, as soon as it came out, I wasn't liking what I was seeing. Uh, I, I knew that, so I got into it pretty early. I didn't think that there's going to be over 150 million people or $150 million invested into the Dow. Yeah, so right, right. That, it got me scared. It got me scared. So I, I pretty much sold right away and oh, okay. I, made, I made a little bit of a profit, but so I you sold before, before the hack. Yes, I, I sold before the hack. <laughs> Thank God. And nice. I was not that's, holding that's, any. That's an unfortunate timing. You know, if you look at a Bitcoin chart, the, the Dow hack was basically the high of the year so far. And then we had like, you know, Bitfinex went down. So the past couple of weeks have been interesting in that regard, right? Like it's like, yeah. and I feel like this always happens to Bitcoin. It's like Bitcoin's going so well, right? Like it's, it's trending, it's attracting new money, you know, the media is positive and then somebody has to screw up, you know, either Mal Gox or, yeah. the Dow, you know, <laughs> Bitcoin yeah. is, is definitely battle hardened. Yeah. I, I, I saw what also happened to the, the Bitfinex, how their, uh, their servers went down, uh, for, for a little while there and it caused a panic sell. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, that was no good. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully we, we were actually, so I think it was like 10 or 10 or 11 o'clock at night and we were in the trading room when that happened. And I was like, look guys, as soon as this opens, I'm liquidating my margin position. Like this is just stupid. Like I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was so mm -hmm. angry at not, not because we were going to lose money. I mean, we were in from the, you know, the low fours. Yeah. Right. It was up over seven, but it was just disappointing. Like really guys, you've had years to get this together. And I know. <laughs> it really uh it, it kind of dulls the confidence right yeah. in that exchange so yeah yeah well you know bitcoin definitely has some growing up to do in that regard like you know but it, it's interesting right it's like we are still in the very early days and i think five or ten years from now we're gonna look back and laugh and be like hey you remember when uh Bivinex did that or you remember this <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 or do you remember when bitcoin was at that 700 dollars mark wow <laughs> Wish I got in there. <laughs> yeah. What? So, what's your predict? Do you have any long-term predictions, sky, pie in the sky ideas, or are you just kind of going with the flow? Or, um, so yeah, I guess I have some some predictions, but don't hold me to it. <laughs> sure. Um, I think we're gonna we're, we might have another leg down from here. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and then we might consolidate for a while and kind of see the same type of pattern that we saw uh, previous to this to this uh, uptick. Um, but uh, you know, longer term, years down the road, I think Bitcoin's definitely going to break uh, the all time high. I mean, it, without a doubt, this the bl blockchain technology is catching on, and Bitcoin's number one. It's always been number one. It'll always be number one, right? It's going to be there. It's never going away. And I think a lot of people are just going to get into it a lot more. A lot more people are going to look at it and start investing into it. So I think uh, naturally the market cap will have to go up. So ten. So Kyle says ten thousand dollars a coin by the <laughs> end of two thousand seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, that, yeah, I agree with you on all fronts. And uh, you know, it, it's it's fun to talk about like long-term predictions, but I guess the only thing that really matters is what you're willing to put your money on, right? So yep. that's why it's uh it's it's better just to get in the trades and make make money as it goes up and as it goes down and you know, hopefully for the community longer term the price is higher, but in the meantime there's a lot of opportunity to make some good right. money as you've proven. So yeah, rinse and repeat, baby. Absolutely, man. Just <laughs> get it done. Uh, absolutely. So any final advice? Like if there's anybody out there, you know, I'm sure we're going to have some people that are brand new to Bitcoin that are like, what the hell is Bitcoin? And we're going to have other people that are like, well, I've been trading it for years. Any just kind of final advice, any lessons that you've thought about or anything you want to say to everybody before yeah. we get off? Yeah, just guys, make sure. Make sure you do not put your life savings into it if you don't know what you're doing. Just start mm. off with you can the the best part of bitcoin is you can you can start trading with as little as like ten dollars fifteen dollars you can just learn how to trade you can learn the technical analysis the holistic analysis the the psychology about the whole market without losing anything right mm -hmm. and then you just gained all these valuable skills that you can apply to a bigger uh portfolio later on so that is definitely my number one lesson there um, when you first start trading and then second is don't over trade. Um, look at the bigger picture and uh, st stick stick to your uh, plan. If you have a plan set up, if you buy in, you better be buying in with a plan. Don't don't just buy in because, oh, you know, it looks like it's going up. You know, maybe I'll just buy in, you know, have a plan set up and, you know, stick to it and make sure you follow through with it. You know, obviously plans plans don't always work out. And um, if that happens, make sure you get out before you lose too much. You know, have your stop set up. So, love it. So, yeah. just to recap: start small. You, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there's no barrier to entry. Like, you don't need twenty five thousand dollars to day trade Bitcoin or to trade Bitcoin like you do in the stock market. Number right. two, don't over trade, and number three, have a plan. Yeah, that's it. Is that it. Love that's it. it. Yeah, love it, man. Well, cool. Kyle, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, man. It's um, it's an inspiration to hear your story. I love the fact that you got out of debt. You know, I'm a big proponent of self education, but you know, in your line of work, being an engineer, like you did it, you got in, you got out, and now you're debt free and and moving on with life. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, Chris. And I again, I thank you for all your uh, your all your content that you put out on YouTube. Uh, all the tweets that you've put out, how you've connected with the community, it's it's been a huge help. And I and I recommend anyone who's going to start trading uh, Bitcoin to uh, to to look at Chris and, and kind of take some uh, valuable lessons away from him because he's. Well, got I, I appreciate that, man. I mean, yeah. that's that's what we're here for is to to help people get on the right side of the market. So awesome! So, yeah. Well, thanks again, man. And um, I'm sure we'll hear from you, you know, some more in the future. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anytime, Chris. Awesome. Where can people follow you? Uh, people can follow me on Twitter um, at BTC Kyle. Um, I post daily. Uh, I sometimes I post uh, charting analysis for you know, like alternative currencies and uh, bigger picture analysis for uh, Bitcoin. Just Very just cool. my thoughts. I don't I don't recommend people follow my trades exactly. Don't ever don't ever do that. But yeah, you can follow me there and. Take, take a peek and follow. Awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. a good lesson too, is like you should never just blindly follow somebody else. You know, always have your own plan. Exactly, exactly. Definitely. So, yeah. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll, link, uh, we'll link all this stuff up in the show notes. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, talk to you again real soon. Thanks again, man. Awesome, Chris. Thanks.